If you've got a great idea for a new product or service, then how would you go about raising the funds to turn that idea into reality? Well, increasingly, inventors and entrepreneurs are going online in search of potential investors who will pledge money in exchange for gifts or perks rather than company shares. In fact, last year, this trend for crowdfunding raised an incredible £120 million for British business ventures. We sent Wendy Hurrell to meet some of the capital's latest crowdfunding superstars. We have raised bids that's going to be there, um, well, the three, three tiers. Tottenham resident Dexter Kelly is planning to create a community garden growing organic and exotic veg. There will also be a cafe where youngsters can learn how to cook healthily. Say like five years time, okay. we're stood here. What is going to be around us? Okay, What's going five on? Five years time, this should be full of raised beds about the place. We should have a hopefully a, uh, a market in which we can sell the food which will also generate funds. You know, we also got to look to, to utilize the kitchen so we can get the food from ground to plate, which is our ethos. And people can actually come and sample the diff different variety of organic, exotic foods. And we can, uh, you know, teach people how to use vegetarian food as well as bringing in the community and letting them cook as well. This land belongs to a local charity, the Selby Centre. The organisation was so impressed with Dexter's plans, they offered him the land and agreed to help him fundraise the £11,000 the project needs to become a reality. The money will be raised through crowdfunding. This is the first time the Selby Centre has tried to raise money in this way. Anyone from anywhere could back our project, so it is taking it to another level. Dexter's Global Garden will launch on SpaceHive, a UK crowdfunding website which specialises in raising money for community projects. Chris Gawley believes it is the nature of the internet itself that makes crowdfunding different. It's a more liberal place, it's a more entrepreneurial place. It's a, it's a sort of ecosystem where ideas can rise and fall really quite effectively, almost a Darwinian type place. Worldwide crowdfunding raised nearly a billion pounds last year and an estimated one million projects were launched with the majority coming from America. But to capture the imagination of the crowd, you need a great idea. It's the only watch that works perfectly with iPhone and Android smartphones. The makers of this smartwatch asked for $100,000 but received 10 million while this subterranean park underneath New York City should become a reality this year. One cash-strapped filmmaker persuaded crowdfunders to pay for these special effects. And nearly 2,000 people pledged cash to get this product, the ostrich pillow, into production. Former Dragon's Den favourite James Kahn believes crowdfunding has a crucial role to play in getting a certain type of new business off the ground. I think clearly because the banks aren't lending at the moment and generally I think there's a, there's a general acceptance that says capital is quite hard to find and I think the main area where the problem exists is with inventors. So when you've got an inventor who comes up with an idea and maybe just needs 10, 15, 20,000 pounds that actually is the hardest capital to raise. And I think that's where I think crowdfunding has really taken off. Crowdfunding has really captured the imagination of British designers and social entrepreneurs. I'm heading off to Farringdon to meet one of London's success stories. He's hoping his invention will change the way we use our photos from our phones. So yeah, this is the latest prototype we've got, which is about as close to um, the production model. So basically people log in with their Instagram account and then choose nine of their favourite images. We develop them onto a single frame of 35mm slide film and then we send it to them in the post. Ben's clever idea and polished prototype clearly caught the imagination of the crowd. He got funded in just 20 hours, the fastest ever in the UK. Me and my friend, um, who I work with, just sat here all night with some beers, just getting a bit giggly and we had a big party, we had some champagne, um, because yeah, we got funded in 20 hours and it was just like, yeah, it was, it was crazy, it was a really good time. Back in Tottenham, no one's expecting Dexter's Global Garden to get funded in a single day. In fact, this project has an entire year to raise the money it needs, but fingers are very much crossed as the bid goes live. 
That's brilliant. Isn't I can't it? believe that. Less than That's half amazing. an hour as well. This is going to be ecstatic. In half an hour, we had 33 funders, most of whom we'd never met before. So that's a new level of developing relationships and uh, we're very proud in Tottenham to have got that much backing from local people. In our austere times, entrepreneurs are keener than ever to find new ways of raising money. So, if crowdfunding can make Dexter's dream a reality, could it also be the saviour of cash-strapped community projects across London? In these times, it makes sense to throw the funding process open, maximise the sources of funds, allow anybody who wants these projects to happen to get behind them. Um, and if we do that, it's not just a smarter way of raising finance for these sorts of projects, it's actually creating a new momentum, a new dynamic that allows people to get ideas off the ground that wouldn't otherwise have happened. It's communities voting for change that they want with their wallets. So what is the secret of a successful crowdfunding bid? Well, on Kickstarter, the biggest of all the crowdfunding sites, researchers found that those with a video were twice as likely to get the money they needed. Emily, a keen cyclist, has created a product designed to reduce road deaths, and for her, a great video proved to be the key to crowdfunding success. It's been me and my crazy bike light for so long, and I talk to people about, you know, I've got this bike light that projects a symbol in front of the cyclist, and it sounds cool, but until you see it, and you see it in a video, it just makes sense, and people go, oh yeah, that's a really cool idea, but you kind of need to see it to, to believe it. Without Kickstarter or, or a similar crowdfunding site, would this have been possible? Yeah, but I wouldn't be in the same position that I am now. We've now been approached since we've been live by some of the, the biggest retailers in the UK. Now here I go. One, two, three. We caught up with Dexter at a martial arts club where he volunteers as an instructor. It's been four days since his project launched. And here I go. The latest that I've heard, we've got £1,902. 50 people has pledged. So it's gone up from Friday. So there's a lot of excitement, you know, and we're... It's, it's, it's so good that these things can happen, you know? So the future now is that we aim to get more people involved, more money in, so we can get the project really moving. And that's what I want to see. Market analysts are predicting the value of crowdfunding projects from around the world will double in value in 2013. That means around £1.85 billion will be pledged for projects like Emily's Bike Light, Ben's Projector and Dexter's Global Garden. So if you've been sitting on a brilliant idea, then there's never been a better time to get crowdfunding than right now.